What's up everybody? Welcome to The Gold Life. My name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch The Big Bang Theory to see how accurate the science and technology scenes in this TV show really are. Let me explain what we're doing here. Um, in 1969, the astronauts on Apollo 11 positioned reflectors on the surface of the moon, and we're going to shoot a laser off one of them and let the light bounce back into this photo multiplier. Oh, that's very cool. A retro, a retro reflector is a device that pretty much takes the light that hits it and then it sends it right back. And then a photo multiplier essentially takes that signal and multiplies it so that you're able to actually read what's coming back from such a long distance. A retro reflector is basically a really strong mirror. Now I haven't the slightest idea of how they got that on the roof of their apartment. Or how they got the laser. I mean, that looks like a lot of university property. I mean, this is not some stuff you can just like buy off eBay and then just like assemble it all like on the roof. I mean, like, because you could do this experiment somewhere else. I don't know why you had to bring it all home with you. But the positioning of where they're doing this is actually very important. You want to conduct these sort of experiments on the highest elevation possible so that you have the least amount of interference when you're actually shooting that laser up into space. Because if you're on the ground and you shoot it, you might actually hit the side of a building that's really tall above you, or you might actually just have other things that are in the air that could interfere with the laser beam. Preparing to fire laser at the moon. Make it so. There it is. There's the spike. 2.5 seconds for the light to return. That's the moon. We hit the moon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 2.5 seconds is correct, actually. That is the amount of time that it will take to mean that you hit the moon. For light to travel from the surface of the Earth to the surface of the moon, it takes about 1.25 seconds, right? And what they did with the laser was, because a laser is just concentrated light. So they shot that laser up to the moon, and it took about 1.25 seconds to get there. And then that's when it hit the photoreflector, and then it hit the light hit the reflector, which as we know, when you hit it, all the light comes back. And that light came back to the photomultiplier, which pretty much increased the signal so that you get a much better reading of what's returning to you. So it took the light 1.25 seconds to get to the moon, and it took the same amount of time, 1.25 seconds, to get back from the moon to Earth. Which why if you add those two numbers together, it's 2.5 seconds. And that's what the computer reading of 2.5 seconds means. It means it took 1.25 seconds to go one way and then 1.25 seconds to come back. So that total time means that you hit the moon. And like, you know for sure it was the moon because if the laser hit like an asteroid or some other object in space, the light wouldn't come back. Like you need to hit a reflective surface to, in order for the light to reflect. So that's how you know like for certain you hit a man-made object on the moon. <laughs> 30 feet. Uh, that, I mean, okay, so that is a very rounded approximation and just overall bad way of measuring distance. I mean, I can tell you how he did it. Basically, like, so when you just let an object, like, drop, it's falling in what's called free fall. So you know the acceleration of that object is going to be the same acceleration of the planet you're on. Like, it's different if you're on the moon or on the Earth, but free fall just means that the only force you're experiencing is gravity. And, like, we're just, we're ignoring air resistance here. The acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of any object that you drop. It doesn't matter if it's like a bowling ball or a tennis ball or a bottle, any object in free fall will have that same acceleration. So the equation for finding height is gonna be delta x is equal to v i, no, just kidding. Because I just realized like, I, I, I'm talking out loud, so I'm sorry if I'm like getting a little ahead of myself, but see, the initial velocity here would be zero because you're holding the object and just letting it go. So like when you're holding it, it's not moving. That's why the initial velocity here would be zero. So that means your delta x would be equal to one half g t squared, which means the um, height which you're calculating is equal to half of the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by the time it takes to actually hit the ground, that time is squared. You can simplify that to h height is equal to g over two t squared. So that g in our equation is gonna be constant, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. 
and t is going to be the time which it takes for the object to fall to the ground, which you know because it'll break, and you can just count that time. For this like really approximated calculation, we're just going to say that gravity is 10 meters per second squared, just just because we're rounding here, pretty much like Leonard's doing right now. Our equation, h is equal to g over 2 t squared, the g is going to be um, 10, and 10 over 2 is 5, so it's just going to be 5 multiplied by the amount of time it takes to hit the floor squared. Let's say it takes 2 seconds to like hit the floor, so it would be 2 squared, which is 4, times 5, which means your height is going to be 20 meters. But we know from watching this that Leonard got 30 feet, which is like 9 meters. Yeah, it's around 9 meters. So for that to be true, the bottle would have to be in free fall for like one and a half seconds. So using our equation, if it fell for one and a half seconds, it would be 1.5 squared multiplied by g over 2, which is 5. Which I got that number to be 11.25. And like that's close to 9 meters, but so it, it, like, that should have been falling for just under one and a half seconds for that to actually be like a 30 foot drop. And after re-watching it, that bottle clearly fell for more than two seconds. So Leonard is very, very off with his calculation. It's far more than 30 feet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This one had a lot more like science and equations involved in it. So I could actually like pretty much like show you more engineering of what's going on in the TV show. If there's anything else that you want me to commentate over and watch, just put it in the comments and I'll get to it when I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.